How are you YouTube? It's Shannon King King Nazu, and I'm here with my review of Dragon Ball Super episode 69. So, this is the special episode where Dragon Ball crosses over once again with Dr. Slump. And we get uh, Dr. Slump himself, uh, whose name I can't remember because, well, to be honest, I've never read Doc the Dr. Slump manga. I mean, not to. Not though through a lack of effort though. I've tried to get it a couple of times, but uh, I've never been able to get a copy because the it's either a library or Barnes and Noble has never had a copy. It's really diff. It was a lot more difficult to get than I thought. Uh, but I digress. Yeah, this is basically the crossover, and uh, we start off with uh, a science convention being hosted by Mr. Satan. <coughs> uh, where all the scientists are showing off their in, their latest inventions, including Bulma and Doctor Slump. Though we think we don't get to see Bulma's inventions, and uh, I find it kind of odd that they would have Mister Satan host uh, host a science convention. You figure it'd be something around his field of expertise, which would be martial arts. So uh, you know, whatever. And Dr. Slum presents a cooking pot that uh, can create anything from thin air. Because gag characters can do things like that. And he, he wins the prize because, for what he's done. Especially when he uh, makes the impressive porno mag. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Uh, Dr. Slump's arch nemesis, whose name I also can't remember. I think it was Mashirito. Uh, I don't know much about him, but from what Geekton told me, he's a parody of Toriyama's, uh, old editor, who's, uh, like, rejected, rejected a lot of his ideas, so it was way, his way of getting back at him. And, basically, uh, he came back as a ghost, saying that he escaped from hell just to uh, ruin the science convention and Dr. Slump's, uh, uh, glory. Kind of easy to escape hell. You figured Frieza would have had a better time getting out. And, uh, yeah, Masharito, or whatever his name is, uh, drugs up Arale and the two angels with her, so they start wreaking havoc. Meanwhile, we have Goku and Vegeta working as security guards, because shut up. And we see, for oddly enough, that Goku has his hair changed, because Bo I mean, because Chi-Chi wanted it to look nice. And it's all swathed back. Wait a second. Swathed back hair. Where was... Oh, God. Last time we saw Goku, or, or an interpretation of him with swathed hair was... Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh God! Let's just move on, because I don't want to remember that horrible, horrible movie. Uh, uh, but yeah, Goku and Vegeta are working as security guards, and uh, Mr. Singh tells Vegeta to try to control Arali, and Vegeta feels like it's gonna be like a piece of cake. At, at the very worst, just a minor inconvenience. But he's dead wrong as Arale proves to be more than a match for him. And Vegeta becomes self-aware that <laughs> that Arale is a gag character, and despite his uh, best efforts, he's not. He gets pwned by her, even defying the laws of physics of her him uh, hitting her across the world, and she ends up back in like. Back to knock him inside the head in about three seconds, and then proceeds to headbutt him uh, all the way up into a mountain where he's uh, being held up by a branch. And at the end, he swears that he's never going to fight a gag character because they're too much trouble. But before that happens, uh, Goku and Arale remember each other and decide to have a friendly sparring match between the two. Uh, Raleigh presents, uh, does her special, uh, energy attack, and Goku does, goes Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, and does the Kamehameha. 
and go and they appear evenly match. Remember, these are gag characters, so just don't try to question the logic of it. This is the same girl who can crack a planet in half. And um, funny enough, she did that in the exact episode. So, uh, Mr. Saint starts getting worried as Goku and Arale seem evenly matched, and they don't know what to do. So, Bulma suggests that they try to contact uh, Beerus to to uh, handle the situation, as he's probably the only one strong enough to uh, handle the situation. Well, of course, they could call the Omni King, but the Omni King would uh, probably make things worse by blowing out the entire u- Universe 7. <laughs> so, uh, she tries to contact Beerus, but she said, but we says that uh, Beerus is sleeping and he doesn't, he shouldn't be disturbed. So, Bumba comes with the idea of having everybody uh, concentrate on the cooking pot that Dr. Slump invented and try to think of the most delicious food in the universe, which turns out to be coffee candy, apparently. Go figure. And it's so enticing that Beerus is able to scent, to smell it all the way from his own planet somewhere far off in the distant universe, and they manage to arrive there in about a few seconds. Even though normally it takes Beerus and Whis at max speed to about 30 minutes to get to Earth. Again, just don't question the logic, it's a gag episode. Though they do try to compensate it by saying that Whis just has never moved that fast before. And Beerus proceeds to, uh... Uh, he proceeds to eat the coffee candy, which he likes. Really, really likes. Apparently even more than pudding. And, uh, Masharito, uh, proceed, uh, tries to, uh, annoy Beerus, but, uh, Beerus says he's not gonna have none of, none of that, and proceeds to use his Hakai move and destroys, uh, Masharito's spirit. So, apparently, beers can destroy even ghosts. You know, yeah, I'll buy that. And then, Arale says that he wants to play with beers. But, Beerus also says he's not having any of that and threatens to destroy, destroy Arale. And people start begging that Beerus spare her. But, he ignores their pleas. However, Arale is spared because, uh, Beerus is suddenly caught the case of diarrhea. <laughs> oh, that's still that's still funny. And then uh, we take Spears back back home. Oh, that was that was a good bit. And then uh, they every and then the day is saved, and everybody goes their separate ways. Huh. Except except Vegeta, who's still hung up by that tree branch. Oh no, this was a really, really funny episode. And it celebrated a lot of the Dr. Slump elements. We even got to hear the old theme song of it. And uh, it was nice that they made a lot of breaking the fourth wall references. Uh, like uh, having the characters self-aware that Masharita was dead and they even had the manga to try to prove it. And... Uh, I mean, Vegeta said that, he, that uh, gag characters are troubling. And it was also nice to rem- see that Goku and Arale remember each other. And I do want to see uh, how uh, Funimation is going to try to do this when they dub it. Because I don't think... Because I think they've only dubbed Arale once, and that was in the Dragon Ball uh, crossover. And they've never... I don't think they've ever done a Dodger Slump uh, English dub. Is there even one? Uh, but, then maybe it is. But yeah, this was a pretty good episode, and it was a lot of fun. And, you, again, you have to just turn off your brain and just get roll with it. Think of it like Looney Tunes. It's, you just don't question the logic of certain things. And I think you'll really enjoy this episode. Unless you're a Vegeta fanboy or a fangirl, this episode's not for you. So, yeah, that was Dragon Ball Super Episode 69, and I'll catch you guys later.